Hello, my name is Ryan Thompson, and this will be the first video in a vi video series on gospel music theory. What I'll be doing is I'll be explaining some gospel idioms with European music theory, and the voicings are all written out, usually in reposition, because it's easier to see the harmony that way. What I'll be doing in these videos is showing you the tonal analysis, as well as explaining some rhythmic deviations that are common in Western gospel, because there is Eastern gospel that is used that uses Eastern music theory, like Indian music theory or African music theory. But we're going to stick with what we know, which is the Western European music theory. This song that we're going to be looking at is LaShawn Pace's There's a Leak in This Old Building from her 2001 album. Now, this is an old song, most likely a spiritual. And it, um, the, the earliest recording, excuse me, the earliest recording is from 1941 by a group called the Southern Boys. The, old, the older version does not sound like the 2001 version. It has a similar lyrics, but it splices two songs together. One by the Southern Boys called There's a Leak in This Old Building. The second one by Maddie Moss Clark that's entitled A Building Not Made by Hands. But enough of that, let's get into the theory. First, we're starting in the key of F, one flat in the key signature. Let's just put that there. Now, the voicing here, you got F, A, and C. That shows you that that is the tonic chord. Not too bad. Playing a root and a fifth in the bass. And if it gets the chords starts to start getting redundant, I just leave the things away, leave the notes away. And the stems, you know what it is, six, eight with dots. If you don't know, I'll probably post a, another video on meter and time signatures later, but that's not important. What's important is this next chord here. This chord is the subdominant, one, four. If you know your cadences, you know that that is a plagal cadence if you go from four to one. That's the definition of a plagal cadence. It's important because the next chord, you have F, A, C, and a flat seven with an F on top. This if you just if you didn't know anything about theory, you would say, oh, F, A, and C. We have F, A, and C before, so it's some kind of tonic. But you have the flat seven, so okay, it's a seven chord, dominant seven. I'm like, okay, great, and this is the same as the other one. But we go a little bit farther than that. It's not that. It is not a tonic seven. You can play it like that, you can think of it that way, but that's, that, that's not how it works functionally. What it is, is actually the dominant of the subdominant. That's a secondary dominant. I will most likely have to do a video on secondary dominants. I'm just realizing that now. Okay, but that is the function. It's tonic. Subdominant, dominant of the subdominant, which is tonicizing the subdominant. Now it repeats here and goes to the second ending, which is the same thing as before. As you see, you have the dominant with the subdominant again, but here you have something different. Now, in normal theory, you would have tonic, supertonic, mediant, subdominant, dominant, submediant, and your leading tone. Now, if this were in the key of F, you would have F, A, C, a being the third 
F-A-C. Right there. Okay, so far so good. This is built on the second scale degree. So that would be G, B flat, D. But there's a B natural. So that means this would be that symbol, which is not, that's not supposed to be there. So what is that? You have G, B natural, D, and F. The F is actually the flat seven, which makes this another secondary dominant. G is a fifth away from what? B flat. It's another secondary dominant. Now you may have noticed this up here. This secondary dominant has a sharp nine on the top. A sharp nine is used to color most of the chords in gospel if you have a straight dominant seven. So for now, we're just going to put, we're just going to leave that there because we know it's a secondary dominant, but we'll get to that in a second. First, you have to learn how to play the first section. The first section has this rhythm. It's not straight. This is the left hand, and this is the right hand. The right hand is playing on one, three, four, and six. The left hand is anticipating the three, the four, and the six, and leading to the one. So each of these, each of these rhythms would be played over these chords. Each of these chords would have that rhythm. Now let's get back here. We have the G, B, D, F, and A sharp. So what chord is that? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Take your time. All right. The G is the dominant of C. So C is the dominant of F. So what we have here is the dominant seven of the dominant. And the next chord is the dominant, C. C7, actually. Now this in particular, I've, you may notice I put parentheses around the three and the six. These markings show where you go to another chord in the rhythmic pattern that I just gave you. This is the tonic. We go to the tonic to reinforce the sound here, because if this were a tonic, that would make this subdominant. Subdominant to tonic, that's a plagal cadence, it's everywhere. This implies that you're playing this chord on the sixth beat of the measure. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is on the third, which is the other one that's parentheses. Now this is where this is where it changes. You have the dominant. Of course, you've seen that before. Of course, you have your tonic. Dominant again. But as we're looking at it, what in the world happened here? I'll show you. Now, if we're looking at this, the first time you see this, you've got to go, okay, we've got a natural, a flat, and a sharp, and one with nothing marked. Something has to have happened here. So first things first, let's look at the pitch content. We have B. D flat, 
F sharp. And we have an A. Okay. If we're looking at it just like that, we have a B7 sus2. The sus2 is the D flat instead of the E flat. Now, if you look at this and you don't know where to go, sus2 really doesn't change that much about the chord. We still have the third and the seventh. Well, we still have the root and the seventh, excuse me. And we also have the fifth, root, fifth, and seventh. We have almost all the chord, all the notes required for the quality of the chord, except for the third. In this case, we just ignore the sus2. It's because because the sus2, b7 sus2 and b7 serve the same function. The b7 has the notes b, e flat, f sharp, and a. So the third and seventh are e flat and a. e flat and a are tritones. Our e flat and A together form a tritone, or in this case, an augmented fourth. If I can write a four there. Now, looking at this, what does that mean? It doesn't tell us the quality of the chord, it's just an augmented fourth. It's a tritone. Now, this is the nature of tritone substitution. If you have a tritone, say we have E flat and A, this is the third and the seventh of a chord, of a dominant seventh chord. In this case, it would be a B, that would be the one, the third would be E flat, the seventh would be A, and the fifth would be F sharp. Don't be mad at me. If you think it's some other letter, it's in harmonic spelling. Don't worry about it now. It's not important. Pay attention. Now, if you flip these two around, instead make this the third and make this the seventh of a new chord, if the A is the third and the E flat is the seventh, what chord is that? Of a dominant seventh chord, what chord is that? You have F, A, C, and E flat. This is a tonic chord with a flat seven. Or as we learned earlier, not that. It is the dominant of the subdominant. So here, we put the dominant of the subdominant, but that is confusing. It's not just the dominant of the subdominant, it's also a tritone substitution. So that's how you notate that. The difference between that over there and this here. This B flat, D, F, A, that's another, that's another subdominant. Now this is just the first few seconds of the piece. And you can see how deep we've already gotten. We already have one, two, three, four secondary dominants, one with a tritone substitution. Now I will play these, I will play this music as best I can at this piano. And let's see if I can make it work.
we have the first chord, the second chord, the third chord, going back, we have the dominant of the dominant, sharp nine, the dominant tritone substitution to the subdominant now that rhythm is not gospel that is not what we have written on the screen on the board now I'm going to set this down and just play play what I have on the board so I'll give you one more look at it. Tonic, subdominant, dominant of the subdominant, that's the secondary dominant, subdominant, repeats, tonic, subdominant, to the second ending, sec secondary dominant. Then we have the dominant of the dominant with the sharp nine on top. Then we have the C, which is the dominant seven, up to the six, up, up to the tonic on, on the sixth beat, then up to the tonic on the third, dominant, tritone substitution, dominant of the subdominant, and subdominant. So now I will play it. And forgive me for the video. I don't have a stand yet. So just listen. again. You may have noticed that these notes in particular these chords fall on five and six. Five, six, one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. Now this is the beginning of a tritone passage, which will be covered in another video. But that is enough. This is what you should be working on. If you have your first four into gospel, this is quite a bit. Now there's a little trick that you can use to make your tonic chord not sound quite so plain. That is the half step grace note to the third. Anytime you have a tonic chord that is actually a tonic chord, you can put that in. And it'll sound interesting. Well, more interesting than just a plain tonic chord, which is this. And that concludes the first video. If you like it, please subscribe or hit the like button.
and I'll see you some other time.